What does Star Wars and a laser have in common? Tractor beams. Maybe what comes to mind when you think of tractor beams is some aliens coming down and stealing a couple of cows. Whilst tractor beams sound like they solely belong in the realm of science fiction, they're actually real. And in fact, once upon a time, I even put one together myself. In fact, there's multiple ways of constructing a tractor beam, but today we're going to be focusing on just one, my favourite, optical tweezers. But what on earth, or in space, are optical tweezers? Well, you might be able to guess from the name that they utilise light to trap and hold objects. And today, we're going to explore the world of optical tweezers, how they work, and some of their many interesting uses. They utilise a focused laser beam to trap and hold small particles. The effect was first described by Arthur Ashkin in 1970. But as you can see, it gets pretty complicated. So today, I'm going to do my best to try and keep things simple. Momentum is mass times velocity. And conservation of momentum is responsible for things like this. And in fact, photons carry a small amount of momentum, meaning they can impart a small push on objects if they collide with them. So with enough light, you can generate a small pushing force. You can even create things such as massive astronomical formations, like this beautiful thing known as the Pillars of Creation. There's one other item we need before we move on to trapping, and that's what do laser beams look like? They don't actually travel in straight lines. They look more like this. And they don't have a uniform beam intensity or equal intensity across the spot of the laser. Put simply, laser beams are stronger in the center and then the intensity dies as you move towards the edges. Lasers are modeled using a Gaussian distribution, which you might recognize as a bell curve. Optical tweezers rely on a focused laser beam. If we take a particle and put it at the focal point of this, then everything balances and we're all good. However, if we move this particle away from the focal point, things get interesting. Light is bent or refracted as it passes through the particle, meaning that after, the light is moving in a different direction. Now, let's put these concepts together. The light has changed direction, meaning it's experienced a change in momentum. In order to keep momentum conserved, the particle must pick up the difference. After some maths that can get very complicated very quickly, this means the light will always push the particle towards the point of highest intensity, which, if we remember from optical tweezers, will be the focal point of the laser beam. So particles get trapped there until a large enough force comes along to knock them out. So, what can optical tweezers be used for? Well, coming back to Arthur Ashkin, in 1987, he successfully trapped the first bacterial particle. Since then, optical tweezers have been used to trap and study a variety of biological organisms. This ability to study such organisms and organelles while trapped is extremely useful. From bacteria to viruses and even small strands of DNA, optical tweezers have greatly increased our understanding of biology. In fact, Arthur Ashkin received the 2018 Nobel Prize in Physics for his lifelong contributions to the field. At the age of 96, he was the oldest person to ever be given this honour. Optical tweezers can also be used for fast viscosity measurements. Viscosity is a measure of how easy it is to deform a fluid. A high viscosity will mean a fluid flows very slowly, like oil. However, a low viscosity will flow very, very fast, like water. If you know the strength of an optical trap, then by putting a particle in a fluid, you can easily measure the viscosity. In fact, I've done this experiment, 
but in reverse, or I used viscosity to figure out the strength of an optical trap. I know, I don't always go with the flow. Sorry. They can also be used for molecular assembly, like a tiny crane that can put things together on a micron level. And if you still don't think this is cool, I've left my favourite to last. Force measurements. And no, I'm not just a nerdy scientist who gets excited with numbers. What astounds me about optical tweezers is not just that they can measure forces, but how sensitive they are. If you suspend a particle in a vacuum using a laser, this is known as optical levitation and can allow you to measure atonewton forces. I just wish it worked on a bigger scale. But to give you an idea of just how sensitive this is, the gravitational attraction force between you and your phone while sending a text is more than a thousand times greater than the sensitivity of these detectors. LIGO is the facility that first detected gravitational waves, and it did so by measuring a change in distance equivalent to one-tenth the diameter of a proton. Yet to do so, it utilised two four-kilometre-long arms. It's hoped, however, that optical levitation will allow us to do the same thing, but with a device capable of fitting on your kitchen bench. Yes, all that from a tractor beam. I think you'll agree that in this case, reality has outdone fiction. Before we finish, I hope you found today's video as interesting as I did. Optical tweezers are amazing, and if you want to learn more, I'll leave plenty of references in the description. I would especially suggest checking out the Nobel Prize speech on behalf of Arthur Ashkin. If you've ever wanted to know how to steal cows out of a random field using a laser, hit the like and subscribe below. And if you want to know as soon as there's any new facts that you can flex on your friends with, hit the notification bell while you're there. Remember, I'm almost a doctor, and until next time, be like a proton, stay positive.